Look at what I think is an interesting property of the number zero and why it in fact can't have a multiplicative inverse. Before we do that, let's recall some pretty standard facts about the rational numbers and then we'll abstract those to an algebraic structure known as a field. So like I said, in the rational numbers, we have zero with the very special property that if we add zero to any rational number, you get that rational number you started with. So that makes zero something called the additive identity. And then, in fact, each rational number has a path back to the additive identity, which I'll call its additive inverse. So I've written that here. Each rational number r has an additive inverse, which we'll call minus r. And that has the property that r plus minus r is equal to zero. We really want to think about that as a path back to the additive identity. Then there's also this very special number called one, and one has the property that one times r is equal to r for all rational numbers. And so that's like the multiplicative identity. And then most numbers have a path back to the multiplicative identity via a multiplicative inverse. In fact, everything except for zero in the rational numbers has a multiplicative inverse, which is just its reciprocal. And if you multiply a number by its reciprocal, you pretty clearly get the number one. Okay, so now we'd like to abstract these properties into, like I said before, something called a field. So we say a set F together with two operations, addition, so there's plus, and multiplication, which is a dot, or maybe just two things placed next to each other, is a field if it satisfies the following conditions. So we have x plus y is equal to y plus x, and that's for all x and y in F. So the addition is commutative. We also need the multiplication to be commutative. So we didn't write those properties over here, but the addition and multiplication in rational numbers is pretty clearly commutative. And then we also need the addition and the multiplication to be associative. So in other words, x plus y plus z is equal to x plus y plus z. And also x times y times z is the same thing as x times y times z. So there's associativity for addition and multiplication. And then we also need some sort of way for addition and multiplication to act together with each other. And that'll be the distributive rule. So that's a rule that you learn in school. That says that x times the quantity y plus z is the same thing as xy plus xz. Okay, so there are some properties that the rational numbers have, although we didn't write them over there. They kind of inherently have all of those properties. And now we'd like to build into the rest of these four properties. So we first need to look at the additive identity. I'm gonna call this number A. So there is a number A inside of the field. I guess I shouldn't say number because this may not be a number field. So there is an element A inside of F such that X plus A is equal to X for all X in the field. So in other words, addition by this element A does not do anything, just like addition by zero over here. Okay, so we also need inverses. So for all elements X of the field, there is a negative X also in the field where X plus negative X is A. So that's our path back to this additive identity defined here. Okay, then we also need a multiplicative identity. And so we'll say there is M for multiplicative identity in F such that X times M is equal to X for all X in the field. Okay, and then we need to start talking about multiplicative inverses. 
And over here, everything except for zero has a multiplicative inverse. And in order to define the field, we'll actually take that and maybe generalize it just a little bit more. And I'm gonna write it like this. And the way that I'll write it will be equivalent to this statement over here in almost every case. So I'm gonna write it as as many x in f as possible have an element x inverse in f such that x times x inverse is equal to our multiplicative identity, which is m. So like I said, as many as possible. So I'll just say in most cases, that's gonna be everything except for zero. And what I'd really like to check is when can that include zero? So let's jump into that question. So on the last board, we built this definition of a field by modeling it after some properties that the rational numbers have. And that brought us to the following question, and that is when can the additive identity of a field have a multiplicative inverse? So in the rational numbers, the additive identity zero does not have a multiplicative inverse. Well, let's see if we can answer this question. When can that additive identity have a multiplicative inverse? Okay, so let's suppose that a has a multiplicative inverse. So I'm using A as my notation for the additive identity. Okay, so what does that mean? So that means there exists something we'll call A inverse in the field such that A times A inverse is equal to this multiplicative identity M. Remember, inverses are really paths back to the identity for whichever operation you're working in. Okay. So now from here, we're going to take any x in f and then use properties of the additive and the multiplicative identity. So let's notice that x plus a is equal to x. Well, that's precisely the definition or the defining property of the additive identity. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna multiply both sides of this equation by A inverse. So let's say that's what this orange arrow is doing. It's multiplying both sides of that equation by A inverse. So that's gonna leave us with A inverse times X plus A inverse times A, which is M, equals A inverse times X. Okay. So now what will we do from here? Well, notice everything has an additive identity. So since everything has an additive identity, we can essentially cancel that A inverse times X from both sides of the equation. But let's maybe do that a little bit more carefully. So here I'll add a negative A inverse times X to both sides of the equation. So over here, it's gonna cancel this back to the additive identity. But if we add the additive identity, the multiplicative identity, we just get M. And over on this right-hand side, we'll be left with the additive identity A. Okay, so there's an important property. So if the additive identity has a multiplicative inverse, then the additive identity and the multiplicative identity are the same. Okay, so let's summarize that and then push a little further. For our initial question, when can the additive identity have a multiplicative inverse, we have an answer. And that answer is when the additive identity and the multiplicative identity are the same. So in other words, A is equal to M. Recall we were using A as the additive identity and M as the multiplicative identity. And now we'd like to push a little bit further and see if that says anything special about the field. Okay, so let's do that. So let's take some arbitrary X in F and let's notice that x is the same thing as m times x. And that's because m is the multiplicative identity. But let's recall that the multiplicative identity is the same thing as the additive identity. So this is the same thing as a times x. 
Okay, but now that's gonna be the same thing as a plus a times x. And that's because a is the same thing as a plus a, because again, a is the additive identity. So let's notice that we've used the fact that the multiplicative and the additive identity are the same already. But now using the distributive rule, this is a times x plus a times x. But then the additive identity is the same thing as the multiplicative identity. So this is m times x plus m times x. But then since that's the multiplicative identity, that is x plus x. Okay. But then from here, we can add the additive inverse of x to both sides and we'll end up with x is equal to a. Oh, okay, but that means we took an arbitrary element of our field and showed that that element was indeed equal to the additive identity, which is in turn the multiplicative identity. So what does that mean? That means that our field contains exactly one element. And I'm actually gonna call that element zero at this point zero being the normal additive identity, and in this point of view, also the multiplicative identity, because that's what we've achieved here. This field must contain one element, and then after some renaming, we might as well call it zero. Okay, so now I think we've got a complete answer to this question. When can the additive identity have a multiplicative inverse? Well, only in the case when the field is maybe the trivial field. In other words, the field containing a single element. Okay, so let's notice I haven't completely cleared up this last point down here, which says as many things as possible have multiplicative inverses. Earlier I said that that is most of the time equal to everything except for zero. Well, there's a little bit left to do to get to that point, but maybe that'd be a good exercise to build off this video. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.